case of an emergency room doctor, John Forsyth. But he's not just an emergency room doctor. Oh no, he's a crypto bro. It was really interesting because one of the articles I read cited him as being a, um, is moonlighting in cryptocurrency. Oh no, he did not moonlight. He had been invested in Bitcoin since he was in his early to mid 20s, I believe. So he was very interested in uh, Bitcoins and he actually founded a Bitcoin mining operation with his brother. I believe in 2019 is when they started their business. Um, will That will come into play in this case. So um, here is Dr. John Forsyth in Better Days. I say Better Days because he was found dead. Um, he was missing over a week. He was a 49 year old emergency room doctor. He was last seen on May 21st. Okay, so what they said was he worked so many hours. Let me just tell you, he had eight kids and he was divorced from his wife. So, you know, got to work a lot. And it seemed like he was just a guy who worked all the time, but he had a luxury RV outside of the hospital. So he would just go work a shift, sleep, go back in and work another shift, whatever it took. He was making bank. Um, nothing wrong with that, right? But what they saw was that on surveillance, he left his shift at seven o'clock in the morning as one does after one works a, I don't know if he worked overnight just from 11 or if he worked to 12, but he was going out to his luxury RV, but did not either make it or got inside. All we know is that his RV was found unlocked with everything in it. In fact, inside his RV, I believe there were extra phones. There were like five phones found, which they didn't know he had that many. They knew he had two, like a work phone and a personal phone. So it's interesting that there were all these extra phones found. That's not really come to light why that happened. But he was texting supposedly his fiance. So he had been divorced. It was just finalized, but they had been separated. Um, in fact, they had had, they, I believe they got married in 2005. They got separated in, I don't know if it was 2017. They had been separated once and then in 2020 remarried, but then by 2021 called it off. So they were trying to make it work. I believe they're both originally from Idaho. So we have Idaho, eight kids. I don't know if they were Mormon, but we've had a number of Mormon stories now. So, and we know that divorce isn't considered like optimal. So maybe we don't know why people try to make it work or whatever. I mean, eight kids, that might be a reason, but his, he, he had moved on. He had just asked this woman that he had been dating for about a year three days before he went missing to marry him. So he's got a new fiance, he left work, he texted her, I'll see you in the morning, or I'll see you soon, sorry, that morning he texted, and then nothing. So what we know from surveillance is he was seen, and I'll show you on a little map, not very far away, I believe it is within 10 minutes maybe. Uh, he went to the Cassville, so Cassville is a very small town in Missouri, and he had lived there for 15 years, um, or sorry, he worked at the hospital there for 15 years. They, he had lived there for some time. I guess his wife, old wife, his ex-wife moved back to um, Idaho, so she was not in the area, just for context, in case you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more, say no more. That's usually who we look at first, right? When somebody goes missing, especially somebody with lots of money. But um, actually she had just, she was going to get, I think it was $19,000 a month in child support. Cause you know, he made a lot of money as a doctor and running this crypto business. And he was a crypto millionaire according to Forbes in 2020. And you know, eight kids. So, and she's out of state. So anyways, where did he go? They see that his car showed up at this, the local small aquatic center, which is basically where there's a swimming pool. And there's like, but his car was parked behind a fence, like where there's a dumpster and recycling, not like anywhere in the front. So his car, or it looks like his car, I should say, was parked back there. And someone looking like him 
was seen on surveillance. So the, the surveillance, because it's not in the front of the aquatic park and it's in this weird area, was it's from very far away. But the person is wearing the clothes that he was wearing and he seems to walk around a bit and then a white van pulls up. Now, in the reporting, I've heard this two ways. One was that he walked up to the van, like maybe he interacted, they left, and then he walked around some more and then walked away, like into the woods, which does not make as much sense when you know what happened in the end. The second telling, to me, makes more sense, which is, yes, he got into this white van vehicle, this SUV, and nobody knows who it is. So... He was supposed to go sleep. He just got off work. He texted his fiance he'd see her soon. It looks like either he just got into the luxury RV to go to sleep, but didn't like and was interrupted somehow because everything was opened and he was he didn't leave things open. His car, when they found it, uh, keys, wallet, passport, both his phones. Okay, like he just walked away from his life. So, doesn't make a lot of sense because he wasn't supposed to be there. Who did he meet? It's just very confusing. So, after the search didn't show up anything, uh, a week later, uh, in, uh, May 30th, so little, sorry, it's been a little more than a week because he was last seen on May 21st. So, this has been uh, almost 10 days, right? Is my math correct, ladies? About 10 days? May 21st to May 30th? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Over a week. Just over a week. Uh, a body is noticed. Floating. Like, can you imagine? You're for, you know, you've worked a whole day. It's 4 o'clock. You've taken your uh, kayak into the local Beaver Lake. Now, this is right over the state line in Missouri. And you notice, hmm, what's that? And you go, and it's a body. So, he was found in Beaver Lake. They pulled him out. Gunshot wound to the head. Now, the autopsy has not been finished. They're not saying if they think it's foul play. Hmm. What do you think? Put that in the comments. Because I'll just tell you. In my opinion, allegedly, just my speculation, sounds like something happened. Um, yes. So... I told you this whole little story. Now, it's 20 miles from where he was last seen. Uh, it was more than 20 miles because it takes... Here, let me just show you. Uh, so this is the drive from Mercy Hospital to the Aquatic Center, and he went like and parked down here. Again, a three-minute drive. So I guess if you're getting off work, maybe someone says, hey, I need you to meet me over here it's privately. Seems kind of weird, right? I mean, why would you meet somebody at 7 in the morning behind an aquatic center? Like the local pool that nobody was at. Um, now, if we look at where Cassville is, that's Cassville where the hospital is located. He was found down here in Beaver Lake. Look, it is an hour and two minutes. So, what happened? He didn't just... Like, if he was going to drive, okay, let's say he was going to kill himself. Unalive himself, as YouTube would like me to say. Why? Why? Does that make any sense, ladies? What do you think? Like, why would he go first to the aquatic center, I'm saying? And who was that, those people? All right. It just is odd because, okay, let's say you are going to unalive yourself and you want to do it away from your family. It's strange, I guess, that you drive out of state. But I get, I, it, that doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Seems more, I don't know, <coughs> to me, a little bit. Putting you in another state, water, gunshot. We don't know if it's to the back of the head. I'm just assuming, which I shouldn't assume. So what do we know about Dr. Forsythe? So we know that he was listed as a doctor and surgeon in the state of Missouri since July 1st, 2005 and that his license was still active. He is an emergency, or was an emergency room, sorry, physician at Mercy Hospital in Cassville for nearly 15 years. I thought this was interesting. He received his medical degree from Ross University, which is headquarters in Barbados. So I know, I have heard, getting into medical school is very 
difficult. I don't know where his undergraduate was from. If they're from Idaho, I don't know if he went to BYU. I don't know, like, how a tip a more religious affiliated university if their pre-med was the same I have no idea I'm just trying to make some connections here but um, we do know that okay so here's and by the way we're drinking some more this episode was uh, I started last week with my favorite Smirnoff ice and I'm continuing cheers mmm Got that nice blue. It's red, white, and berry. Very uh, Memorial Day. It's going to be June Flag Day. I like the theme, and it's kind of hot outside. So, what do we know about Forsyth and his cryptocurrency? This is a little bit more interesting. So, he started a... He had been involved in Bitcoin. He actually made it through... Um, Bitcoin used to have a saying about waiting... Hold, hodl. Uh, hold, hold on long, and I forget what the other one was, until it splits, because Bitcoin was splitting, and I can't even, it would take a whole podcast just to explain what Bitcoin is, but it is a decentralized form of currency that isn't regulated. So, people buy virtual money, basically, and the more people buy, the more it's worth, and... Uh, it, it, people have become millionaires. What's, what I do know about it is that because it is decentralized and isn't part of any country's banking system, it avoids taxes. It avoids tracking. Like in the United States, if you give somebody more than $10,000, you have to, a bank has to say something if that amount of money was transferred and you yourself have to claim it. Um, for tax purposes, and it's that limit is there because of money laundering. So, <coughs> and organized crime loves cryptocurrency, as far as I know. That's just my allegation, speculation, don't sue me. But that's what I understand about it. But it's also something that people thought, okay, I can make money, and people who weren't criminals. So I'm not saying everybody in crypto is is criminally associated, but criminals in organized crime did see it as a um, way to, you know, avoid popo. Uh, so he developed this thing called Anfo, which uh, made him a millionaire. He was a CEO of this company. He created it, and in in 2020 and it allowed users he created it with his brother to use tokens while referring others to the platform through a strategy called network mining and i can't even tell you exactly what that is My, all i know is that mining bitcoin i think it has to do with looking for bitcoin that um got lost by other people because people you have a wallet a virtual wallet and if you don't remember your code to get in there or like some people were holding codes for people who were investing with them without a code that's like it's gone so i don't know if mining is a way for people to mine what was lost by others but it all i know it takes a lot of electricity you need a lot of computer use so Somehow he was getting, he used referrals. And I'm, okay, again, he was an undergraduate. I guess he was a mathematician. He was very interested in this uh, investment way to make money. And apparently he was very uh, successful in this. All right. So why does this matter? Well, it matters because there have strangely been a large number. I think I counted up since, um, including a disappearance of the person who started Bitcoin, the actual founder, went missing, and they were not even sure they knew his real name. So let's just think about that for a second. He went missing, I believe it was in 1996. Then there was somebody um, in 2004. But then as the 2000s, happened there in 2018 there were two 
And then in 2020, there were like 10 people in this industry and they're CEOs, they're billionaires, and they drowned. They die in their sleep. They fall out of buildings. Oops. You know, because suicide. Run aliving themselves, as one would say. So, it is just interesting that this case of John Forsyth, the fact that he was a crypto millionaire, and um, now there was the Bob Lee case, which I will update you guys on. I'll tell you about in my next upload. It is not as interesting to me just because we know that it was a brother of somebody that this Bob Lee allegedly had been sleeping with and allegedly the brother got mad, knifed him, dumped him. I mean, it's horrible. Um, but that is not the most, um, like rich people having stupid amounts of money, having illicit sex and drugs and getting involved in people that end up where someone gets so angry that they unalive you is not that unusual. So I will let you know about it. But what is unusual is that in looking up about all these crypto deaths that the Daily Mail even said it was called the Curse of the Crypto Kings. So we have T.T. Kulander. He was the co-founder of the Amber Group. He died unexpectedly in his sleep uh, this past November 3rd. Uh, it, I believe, and I wrote down, I, my notes are over there to the side, but he, he was very young. I'll do a whole thing on this because it is insane. These are just the people, these are the overseas people. Uh, Nicole Mushigan, he was 29. He died in, um, he was in Puerto Rico, I believe, and he had sent out these paranoid Twitter posts saying that the CIA and Mossad were trying to murder him, and then he was found, uh, like, washed out to sea and, and dr drowned. I mean, it's just weird, but of course everybody said they had nothing to do with anything, right? Right. Um, then in 2018, there was Gerald Cotton and Matthew Mellon. They both died without sharing the keys to their crypto wallets, and they were worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Gerald, I believe, was on his honeymoon in India and suddenly died. And people are like, he didn't die. It, it, he took that money with him. He changed his name. I mean, his bride came back, so it, it would seem whatever. So there is a Netflix documentary called Trust No One. If you want to um, dive into that whole theory of that he faked his own death. Uh, then we have the CEO, Sober Grid app founder and creator, Bo Mann, who disappeared in 2021 and whose remains were just found. So, and there, there's lots more. Do you guys remember last year? June, I talked about Kathleen, Catherine with a C, Cooney, and she was from San Francisco. She was from Binance, and she had been the CEO, the first female CEO, and all of a sudden Binance was like, yeah, we're introducing this new CEO, and I was like, where did Catherine go? And since like April 9th of last year, she hasn't updated anything, been anywhere, just disappeared. So... Um, in, in looking up, I tried to find, because I was like, I know there was another crypto death. Who was, she was related to something that was Binance. Then, while trying to find her, because I'm, you know, putting in female woman, see, uh, crypto CEO, uh, disappeared. Another woman came up. There was a woman in Utah who had been in California at a, um, some crypto, see, uh, like, leader, what do you call it, um, conference, and she was leaving, she had been at somebody's house, was going to the airport, and apparently started driving around in her rental, calling her parents, sounding, and they said it sounded like she was having a manic episode, but she had never had mania before, so you don't just have a manic episode in your 30s, that's not how that goes, but that's what they said, and they said she mentioned she was in the matrix, which, if you remember from another case in California, the guy who unalived his children with the shark uh, spear, 
said he thought he was Neo in the Matrix. He was following QAnon. He took the kids to Mexico, if you remember that. So these people, it's just really weird that they say these similar paranoid things out of the blue that they never said before. And then she was found in a neighborhood, even though they had been looking for her like a week. Her name was Erin Valente, I believe. She was found dead in her car. And then another guy that same month had been found dead near his car. He was a little bit older. He was also a tech guy in the same area. So what is going on in tech? We will dive into it more. I got a lot of my um, information from Gizla K at Grizzly True Crime. Go follow her. She is great. She did a like two and a half hour um, John Forsyth case deep dive. So um, I highly recommend going into that. So that is that case.